Today we are talking about Slay the Spire and whether or not you should back it. Now before we dive into this video, I just want to let you guys know I'm a huge deck building fan and when I heard Slay the Spire is coming out with a tabletop version on Kickstarter, I was extremely excited. I thought I'd be backing this game on day one. But now that the campaign is coming to an end and we've seen pretty much all the daily unlocks, I want to discuss if this game is right for you and whether or not it's worth backing. And that's what I want to talk to you guys about in this video, letting you guys know my thoughts and opinions, give you guys an idea how this game plays so you can judge if this game is right for you. Slay the Spire the board game is a cooperative adventure deck building game that is based off the popular video game where you are playing as asymmetrical characters traveling up a spire trying to survive and defeat a boss. Along the way you'll be upgrading and gaining new cards for your deck as well as gaining potions and relics that will help aid you on this quest. Now the biggest difference between the video game and the tabletop version is how this game plays cooperatively. See in the tabletop version, enemies spawn in different roles based on how many players there are. The players can work together to defeat all the enemies in different rows, but the enemies can only attack the players that are in their row. While I should say only basic enemies can attack players in the row, there are more advanced elite monsters that can do more damage to other players and of course the boss can attack all players. But that is the basic idea behind this game is that you're defeating waves of enemies, upgrading your cards until you reach the final boss. Once combat has ended, players will gain rewards based off what enemies have been defeated and then they can choose what pathway they would like to move to next. Some of the encounters that players will discover are events that could help hinder or aid players face off more basic enemies or more challenging monsters like elite enemies until they reach the end of the act where they'll face off against a big bad boss. Now the acts are the way for players to continue playing the game with every card they've collected so far instead of starting from scratch each time they play. Because in this game you get to keep the cards that you upgrade between acts. You can also keep your potions and relics and any new abilities that you get and bonuses from act to act as long as you survive. Now each act in the game We'll play a little bit over an hour or so, again based on how many players it could play longer. So factor that in if you want a long deck building game that you can continue playing. So if you want to play between different acts, you want to find a way to save your cards and keep them nice and organized in the box. So when you pick this game up again, you can go straight into act two or three, wherever you left off the first time playing and get right into the game. But I'm not too sure how well you can save this game between acts because there's so many cards to keep track of. Which brings me to talk about the price because this game has a lot of cards and a lot of card sleeves. Now why is there a lot of card sleeves? Because this game has an upgrade system between cards. When you upgrade a card, you simply turn it over and you get the upgraded version of that card. Now I really love the idea behind that because now you're not charging through another deck, taking up more gameplay time to find an upgraded version of the card that you wish to upgrade. You can simply turn it over and put it in a sleeve. But because there's so many sleeves, that's why this game is probably at a high price point because sleeves can be expensive. Personally for me, I don't see a good reason to back it now and not wait to retail to see the final price of this game because I do believe this game will be cheaper in retail. There's not really any Kickstarter exclusives. Sure, they say that shipping is a bit cheaper. You're going to get a claw expansion. You can get a collector's edition. You can get playmats as well. So if that's your thing and if you want to pick those up, then I'm sure it's going to be worth it. However, for me, I don't think I need all that fancy stuff. I'd rather save my money and if not I can always play the video game and that can satisfy my needs and my itch to play this game. Now don't get me wrong I love Slay the Spire and I think this is a great cooperative deck builder or a good fantastic solo deck building game if you're looking for one. I do think if you like the video game then you also really enjoy the tabletop version. However I would just ask yourself would you rather play 15-20 minutes of Slay the Spire or play hours and hours of the tabletop version instead. Plus, the tabletop version has a lot of maintenance when it comes to setting it up and taking it down. So factor that in if you're thinking about backing this game. Do you really want to spend all that time keeping track of the cards, setting it up, taking it down, deconstructing your decks? Is it really worth it? Because if it is, I'm sure you would definitely enjoy this game. But if it's not, then it's probably not worth backing and waiting to retail if you plan on getting this game. If you guys are backing this, let me know in the comment section down below because I do believe this is going to be a great game no matter what. The price point could be high. But if you enjoy the game, does price really matter? If you wish to learn more about Kickstarter crowdfunding games, make sure you like this video and are subscribed to the channel because I do videos like this all the time. And until the next video, I'll catch you guys later. Take care.